Hi, thanks for joining me. This is Aerial Traveler. It's a nice May day in southeastern Ohio. A little overcast today. Still a good day to climb, hoping it doesn't rain. Just wanted to say something about my uh, newer rope here. Uh, this is Samson Predator. Uh, I think it's 11.4 millimeter. Uh, it's double braid, 24 strand. Um, they do sell it at Wesper. I think it's an exclusive offering from Wesper. Uh, I did get mine with a hand uh, spliced eye, uh, which I use on the other end there for a moving rope system. Um, it's a great rope. Uh, I love it a lot. I cut my poison ivy rope and nicked it. I had to retire it a little bit early. It's uh, I still have about 119 feet left, 118 of the poison ivy, which I really liked. I really like that poison ivy rope. Uh, the poison ivy rope that I have is actually the older version, uh, not the newer version that's manufactured by Samson. Uh, it's actually Yale poison ivy. My favorite rope of all time is Yale Bandit, which is the same as Yale Blaze. Uh, I think this is my new favorite rope. Um, it performs well. Uh, it seems lighter uh, than the Poison Ivy, uh, even though I don't think on the specs it is. Uh, it's also smaller and um, takes up less space in my backpack when I haul it. So in general, um, I was a little worried about the stretch. Uh, the stretch on the specs were a little bit higher than uh, Poison Ivy. Uh, but I found that stretch really isn't an issue for me. This is nothing like Tachyon, uh, which is very bouncy. Uh, which I really didn't prefer. Uh, this is a nice static rope. Uh, the color is awesome for recreational climbing or for hunting. Um, the rope is actually hard to find if you throw it in the weeds here. Uh, it's a great rope. Uh, I highly recommend it. I think I like it a little bit better than Poison Ivy uh, 11.7. I'll probably get a lot of uh, uh, comments about that, but uh, I think this is my replacement for Yale Bandit, uh, which is my all-time favorite rope. So, uh, Samson Predator, 11.4mm uh, from Westspur. Uh, they were having a sale for a while because it was overstocked. Highly recommend it. Uh, give it a try. Uh, I wish I would have tried it years ago. I have my rope here. This is Predator, Samson Predator rope. I've got a uh, rated delta on there. And I've got this tag line that I've already put in this uh, sugar maple. At least I think it's a sugar maple. The tree's on private property, so I uh, keep a tag line in the tree. Uh, I've already been up in the tree once and uh, have set my line up there. Uh, the tag line, uh, this is paracord. Uh, I think it's 550 paracord. Uh, it lasts a good five, ten years in the wild before it starts to break down. Um, I have them scattered all around uh, properties that I climb. The sugar maple today is uh, in a pretty dense forest. Uh, it's uh, not very tall. I'd say about 60 feet tall. Uh, very dense canopy for uh, a forest grown tree. Uh, it's been uh, attacked by some grapevines here. I've already cut this one and uh, there's another one over there I cut off. Uh, I'm going to go up there and try to clear out the crown a little bit and uh, get rid of some of that grapevine material. Let's see if I can pull this up there. This is the other end of the uh, tag line. Uh, I just have it tied loosely around this little sapling. Uh, this is a dogwood. The uh, 550 paracord works pretty good as a uh, tag line. Not real great as a pull down rope. It's a little skinny. Uh, sometimes you really have to give that a tug if you're doing a canopy anchor. I do use the uh, uh, tag line that I leave in the tree sometimes as a retrieval line for canopy anchors. 
Uh, we're not doing that today. I have a base anchor or basal anchor planned. You can see I'm uh, not doing anything real fancy here for this uh, basal anchor. I'm just using the uh, rated uh, Delta Quick Link. Um, I've got a couple wraps around the tree um, and I try to make a point of trying to cinch it off pretty good against the uh, connector. Okay, so I've got a, a new piece of gear, at least new to me. Uh, this is the third version of the Hitchhiker. Uh, this is called the HHX or Hitchhiker X. Uh, this isn't manufactured by Rope Tech. Uh, this is manufactured by Climbing Innovations. Uh, it uses a shackle here at the bottom uh, instead of the oval carabiner. Uh, still has a, a steel or stainless steel dog bone. At least I think that's steel. Maybe. Um, and then uh, the body here is aluminum. Uh, that's a bit different from uh, version 1 and 2 of the Hitchhiker uh, from Rope Tech. Um, the weight is significantly less uh, with this device uh, than version 1 and 2. Uh, I can actually notice a difference in my backpack uh, hauling it out here. Uh, I'm not 100% uh, convinced on this uh, slick pin. I did like the oval carabiner on the other versions. Um, the oval carabiner did give you a little slop. Uh, this doesn't have that slop, but it's um, pretty tricky uh, to get this all set up and get the pin through here, uh, especially if you have to detach this uh, up in the canopy. Uh, I've uh, taken to using just a carabiner with it uh, for a quick connection. Um, I think I like that a little bit better. Uh, that allows me to keep this slick pin in place in case I really have to untie. Um, carabiner does add some space or distance or length to the system. I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm trying to work around it. Um, this shackle doesn't work with the most favorite swivel that I use, the Camp Gyro. Uh, the ends of the shackle here are just too big to get through those eyes. Uh, one benefit of using the carabiner with the shackle is that I can still use it with my favorite swivel. If you still want to use a swivel with this device, uh, you can use the large Petzl swivel and the large DMM swivel. I'm not sure if the small DMM swivel would work, but uh, I think the large uh, swivels would clear the eyes of the shackle here. I've uh, got some uh, brand new HRC hitch cord here. Uh, this is eight millimeter. I've never used this hitch cord. It's a bit fuzzy. Um, I'm interested in seeing how it does. Uh, it was included when I bought this uh, device used. Um, I did try the Marlow Viper. Uh, that was one of the hitch cords that came with this device when it was uh, shipped new. Wasn't a big fan of that. It was a little slippery for me. Um, I'm hoping the HRC will work well with the uh, Predator, uh, Samson Predator rope that I have here today. So you can kind of almost take that pin out and you not lose it there. You just got one plunger left. Uh, that just kind of barely holds it in place there to install the device. It is a little bit finicky to get that slip pin in there.
I, I usually just use a six wrap um, uh, hitch uh, that uh, was recommended by Rope Tech in version one and two. Uh, you can use all kinds of different versions of hitches. I could do one, two, three, four, five, six wraps. Uh, start the first wrap towards the spline here. Uh, the hitch cord uh, almost always uh, stretches out, so I try to pull it pretty tight before I tie a stopper knot. Lots of stopper knots you can you can do. Let's do a pretty simple one. I heard the stevedore is a good one too. Now this is actually a four foot hitch cord. I usually use three and a half foot hitch cords. Uh, that way you can buy hitch cords in lengths of seven feet and cut them in half or have like Westbrook cut them for you. Uh, I didn't bother cutting this one. Uh, I bet you it's gonna be pretty tough to cut. I have to use an angle grinder, to get through it. I'll just try to keep that out of the way. I've seen some guys uh, tuck it through here uh, to keep that hitch cord in place. Uh, that might be a viable option too. Uh, in reality, I probably should cut this off uh, so it's not in my way. As you can see, as you weight the device, uh, the hitch kind of elongates and uh, uh, it's a little more slack. I'm going to try to use this carabiner today. You can see the whole device there. And now, uh, this is version 3 of the Hitchhiker. Uh, Climbing Innovations recently came out with the version 4. And version 4 actually has several different variations. Um, that new version, version 4, is HHFX or HHXF. I can't remember which one it is, but uh, it was just released in 2022. Um, haven't had a chance to try that new version. Uh, the only reason I have this version, I think, is because the original owner was selling it to be able to get the version 4. Well, I'm just getting set up here. I got a pile of gear. I was going to go kind of light today uh, just so I could take some water in my saw. Um, it is just starting to sprinkle. Uh, it looks pretty dark up there. Wind seemed pretty good. I might just go ahead and set up and see if it gets worse before I go up. We'd like to get up in the sugar maple today if I can. Okay, I'm all suited up. Uh, it's just lightly sprinkling. I'm hoping it blows over. I got most of my gear packed up and my backpack zipped up. Um, I, I do have the end of my rope set up as a moving rope system. Uh, it's loose here. I'll pull it up if I need it. I do have a pretty long lanyard here. Uh, that I can use up in the tree. Um, of course, I brought two left-handed gloves, so I'm going to go uh, Michael Jackson style today. I do like the gloves. They give you a pretty good grip on the rope. Um, I kind of wish I would have uh, bought my right uh, version. This is what I was talking about with the uh, size of the shackle here at the end. Um, it's just too big to get through these eyes in this Camp Gyro. Uh, it does fit into the large petzl swivel I have. Um, I do prefer the Camp though. Uh, with Carabiner, it seems to be working okay. If you put 
your tender on. Here a minute and trim that branch and try to get rid of some of these vines. Very careful, my side of my rope going down to the base of the trees there.
So a couple things I really like about this is it's much lighter. Um, it's not smaller than the Hitchhiker 2. Uh, the body of this Hitchhiker 3 or Hitchhiker X is a little bit bigger. Not much, but incredibly lighter. Um, I think the only drawback for me is this shackle. Uh, looks like I can make it work with the carabiner. I still have to tend it up here uh, just to get the best uh, tending action. If I tried down here, I, I don't think there's, there's a, too much slop here for me to get a good tend as I go up. Uh, I was tending right here. It seems to be working okay. Um, we'll have to see if we can perfect that. Uh, one difference between this Hitchhiker X or Hitchhiker 3 versus uh, both the Hitchhiker 1 and 2 is that you can't use the um, what's called the Hitchhiker holster and that's like a piece of uh, hard plastic uh, that's molded to fit here and has a tending point. Um, I do like that. Uh, some folks don't like that to tend the Hitchhiker 1 and 2. I've always used it and it's worked well for me. I am uh, missing it here. I, I wish uh, there was a little bit better tending point, but I, I guess the shackle is the tending point, so we'll, we'll work with that. HRC looks like it's great cord. I should have used it years ago, it looks like. Um, not too expensive. Um, nice fuzziness out of the box. Um, I'd like to see how durable it is. Uh, not my most favorite color, but I guess it looks like it's already broken in. Um, I cleared out a little space through the canopy here so I can get up again. Uh, I cut some things that were conflicting and rubbing. I also had to cut off a few just to gain access to the tree and uh, so I could have a nice route on my down rope here. Um, I'm not going to do too much trimming and I'm not an arborist, so I'm sure my cuts aren't the best, uh, but uh, I think the tree's better off for it uh, by at least stripping off the vines. I was just being robbed of a whole bunch of nutrients and sun. Um, I think you'll see the canopy flourish here in the next couple years. Uh, I did something similar to a sycamore just down the hill here. Um, it was almost dead. Uh, I, one year I took the vines off. Um, it was being attacked from four different vines. Um, vines are the size of a small tree. Uh, and then the next couple years I stripped off all the dead vine material and now the tree's thriving. Uh, it's actually doing great. And I was uh, lucky in the fact that it uh, Looks like it stopped raining. Okay guys, uh, why don't you tell me uh, if you think that's a Norway maple or a sugar maple. Might have to look it up, but uh, if anybody could tell me in the comments, that'd be great. I think there is a couple ways to tell a Norway maple from a sugar maple. I um, can't remember what they are, I'd have to look it up. But if anybody can tell me what they think this is, a Norway maple, sugar maple. Judging by the hardness of the wood, I, my guess is, or money is on the sugar maple. So if anybody has the uh, Hitchhiker X, uh, I'm interested in seeing how you actually attach it to your harness. Uh, are you actually using the shackle uh, to attach it to a ring or a swivel? Or are you using something like me where you're using a connector to speed up the process a little bit? Uh, let me know. Also, uh, let me know uh, what kind of swivels uh, you guys are using. Um, I think everybody knows I love this Camp Gyro. Uh, rings are a little small. I kind of wish they'd come out with a fat version, but the same size. A um, lot, lot lighter than uh, this Petzl Swivel, but the Petzl Swivel does have some big openings, which uh, opens up some possibilities. Uh, let me know what your favorite swivel is for your bridge, or if you even like swivels on your bridge.
Okay, I'm getting ready to go down. Um, I'd say that's probably 45, 50 feet. Um, there's another good uh, 15, 20 feet above me here. Uh, I could definitely probably go up one more pitch, but um, I think I'm pretty content right here. Uh, I did set up a, a DMM. Uh, what is this? This is a revolver, I think. A DMM revolver, uh, just to help me get down a little bit and control the friction. Uh, I don't have a glove on this hand, so... One thing I noticed is that this, uh, this version does get a little bit hotter. That wasn't a very fast uh, descent. Um, the body is significantly warmer. Uh, you can see how small that uh, predator rope packs up. Um, I use these rope bags which have a built-in tarp and you can really cinch it down and compact it into a pretty small form factor. I love these rope bags, um, they're great when it's muddy out, but uh, just to give you a size reference, there's a 20 ounce uh, clean canteen bottle. So Predator really packs down into a nice tight package, uh, smaller package than 150 feet of poison ivy. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you how I uh, pack up my gear uh, in my backpack. Uh, this is a black diamond backpack. Um, the uh, exact model number and size is going to be in the description. Uh, I think it is a 65 liter if I remember correctly. Um, but uh, it, it's more than enough to handle all my gear and I, I always take more gear than I actually need. Uh, in the main pocket I just uh, open this up, <clears throat> make sure everything's loose. And uh, I get my rope, which is the heaviest item in the bottom. I kind of position it in there so it's uh, balanced and uh, fills up the bottom of the bag nicely. Uh, next thing I'll do is I'll uh, put my long lanyard in there. I'll try to center that. It's pretty heavy too. Uh, next thing I try to get in is the uh, actual harness or saddle here. Uh, I usually kind of bunch up the belt and uh, overlap the leg pads. Uh, I try to get the leg pads in first and then get the belt so the uh, <clears throat> back of the belt is towards the, uh, the back of the backpack. That goes towards your back. So back towards the back. Uh, that helps to reinforce the back of the backpack and get everything pushed down real good. Um, it gives you a nice little well inside of your your uh, your belt there to put gear. So I use these REI um, stuff sacks. Uh, these are a lot heavier duty versions. I think they have lighter versions. Uh, it's got some nice pull tabs here to get it open quickly more than enough to keep all my hardware and software in 
Uh, that fits nicely inside of the uh, belt. Uh, storage of the knee ascender. Uh, this one's a Sokka. Uh, it's always kind of been an issue. Uh, mine's always kind of crescent shaped because uh, I have to shove it in here. I just have everything clipped, to get, clipped together and uh, I just kind of put that towards the back of the backpack also. And then I usually do a kind of a, a couple drops there and another thing is to remember your foot ascender too. Uh, this backpack has a couple cinching uh, tops here, so I cinch both of those up real good. Uh, water bottle uh, goes here on me. And then my uh, Zubat or Zimbat uh, Silky, uh, I try to tuck underneath these straps and get into this side pocket here. Um, try to strap that in real good. Really expensive saw, so I don't want to drop it. Make sure it's down in there real good. And the last thing is to do is uh, uh, put my helmet in this little uh, brain pocket here. So the brain protector in the brain of the backpack. So I'll do that now. Oh, and. Uh, Thanks for watching. So I got to put my camera away. So uh, I'll see you guys later.